now you're coming back to the Gaiety on the 10th of March this year. You're bringing your new show, Liam McCoy Ways In. Can you tell us a bit more about the show? It's a funny, funny show, but it's a way in, you know, it's a way in on life and, um, you know, talking about things that have affected us, like we mentioned lockdown, so how we felt about that. Similar to the diary show that I did here that was a huge success that people loved and we had a great time. Loads and loads of fun. Martin's back, for anyone that remembers our Martin on sound. We're a bit of a double act in the show sometimes. It's very, very light and that's what I say, like you'll leave the show feeling a stone lighter, you know, and lose all your worries. Obviously I've got some songs in there because my audiences do love a good song or six. Um, without giving too much away, um, there is there are um, quite important topics in it. Kind of touching on mental health and kind of the battering people take sometimes mentally in life and we've had a hard time and we're having a hard time just now and how you cope with that. I had a lot of lovely feedback from the kind of vehicle that I use in the show and what it symbolises and a lot of people opening up and talking about how they feel and their experience with mental health, how they felt great and they felt really empowered and I was like, that's genuinely like 50% of the show is about empowerment and teaching anybody to believe in themselves. Because the amount of people that come, you know, you know who you are, the people that come and even sometimes we do the meet and greet and they'll go, they'll try and stand behind me, which I used to do in photos, try and stand behind your pal. And I'm like, no, no, we're not doing this. Like we've talked about this and we're not putting a filter on it. So when we do the meet and greet, so you know, there's no filters unless it's on your own phone, but we won't put filters on or, we, you know, it's like, it's just about embracing who you are. So what have you been up to for the last couple of years? Where's the show been so far? Oh wow, so I did The Fringe 2022, which was amazing. I did some um, kind of Central Belt Scotland venues, some a couple of Glasgow venues. It was so much fun, so well received. And then I went and took the show to Soho Theatre in London. <laughs> like what? Like they wanted it. Like they were like, come, come and do it. And that was epic. Like it's, if MD doesn't know, look it up. It's like, it's an iconic uh, comedy venue where some of the greatest comedians that you see, stand-ups, primarily stand-ups, they do a lot of amazing theatre as well, but, you know, these, like, I mean, Nish Kumar, I came up, Nish Kumar was playing after me, I was like, I came off stage and he's like, hi there, and I was like, what is going on here? Like, it was amazing, and it was it was really nerve-wracking for me. I was like, oh, what if they don't like it, you know, and I've, it's a huge iconic venue you know and I was so overwhelmed with the response and the feedback from London I just started to have visions so you've obviously got like an incredible long history with the gaiety I know you've played here before and you've just gotten a whole experience with the audience and the history of the theatre yeah. can you tell us a bit more about your relationship with the gaiety oh man I'm trying to remember what year it was uh, 20 I want to say 2010, but I don't know if I'm making that up. 2012, the year I got married. 2012. 2012, my goodness. Ten years so, last year. Oh so, God, yeah. Mike Courtney, who used to do the pantomimes here, and he uh, he always gave me a brilliant fairy role, a really strong fairy, a uh, pantomime fairy, and I had the absolute honour of saying the first line on the newly refurbished Gaiety stage, and it was like, it was epic, and we had a press night, and the, all the greats were there, like Johnny Beattie, God rest beautiful Johnny B too, who I subsequently then worked with in River City. Um, I met him that night when we did the relaunch on the press mm -hmm. night. And I, I mean, I, I got to work with him after that. He was like my TV grandpa, but before then I, I hadn't met him before and I was so nervous to meet him. And he came backstage and he was chatting away and then he went, oh, come on, show me. And as if we'd known each other for years. He's like, come and show me the dressing rooms. I was like, oh, Johnny, the dressing rooms have been done up. And he's in showing me all the dressing rooms and then you know, he was talking about Una McLean and like Jack Mulroy and the Gaty Whirl and, you know, Ricky Fulton and all the people that have been in these rooms. And it, I always knew it was an iconic theatre, but to have Johnny there with me in that dressing room, like pointing out, telling me stories, which will remain secret, <laughs> about, you know, things that went on. And you know, and I was just like, this is nuts. And then he walked through the that famous door, you know, onto the, the side of the stage that you walk through when your heart's going like that. And he walked through and he went on the stage and it was just it was just he and i like it, it was just this moment that happened like totally organically and it was just it was a total dream so can you give us that first line from the panto do you remember it yeah i actually do <laughs> so when fairy comes on she always comes on to a pyro you know the big <laughs> in pantomime right. and courtney had written this that's mike courtney he's a lovely man he had written that the joke that the pyro goes off deliberately on the wrong side of the stage so the fairy would enter 
and the pyro went off and I came on first line of the gate pyro went off wrong side of the stage and I went wrong button stupid and the whole theatre went really silent because I think they were like oh no like they didn't laugh straight away because I think they thought oh my god like is one of the crew made a mistake like because I was shouting under the ring wrong button stupid but it was just so lovely it was lovely to and have the opening monologue because it was Cinderella it was Cinderella so and getting to do the once upon a time moment for the first time in so long on that stage like I'll never I can remember like the show cloth and everything like what colour it was and I just it was such a beautiful moment for me like I've got a real love for the volunteers like a lot of people don't realise that the gate um, has a lot of volunteers most of the people you see front of house and box office and things there's nothing like a volunteer I think you can really feel it in the venue they, they love the venue so much and it's there's so much heart when you walk in here I just think it's a hugely important theatre it's you don't have many local theatres like this you know anymore and that operate on the scale that this does and it's a joy to come through from the, the larger city you know and come and perform here and it's just you, you're always overwhelmed you're always nervous if you're going to be welcomed back you know and every time you come out and you get that big warm reception it's like overwhelming it's a I can't I actually like get goosebumps thinking about it sitting here in these seats looking up there going oh god like it's such a it's such an amazing moment coming out and seeing everyone again Same. one thing I'll say about the gate is me and the audience have such a laugh they're such a beautiful audience you know so I'm so happy to bring, be bringing this show because we didn't get to Ayrshire uh, towards the end of last year so and it's been a long time coming I'm so excited to come back yeah we're so excited to have you yay Thank you.